Hey guys, today I'm gonna answer all of your questions about dental veneers. veneers are basically a very thin layer of some sort of material that go on the surface of your tooth and will change the shape or the color or both. The most commonly used material to make a veneer would be either porcelain or composite. Now composite is basically some sort of acrylic material. It is what you, uh, your dentist uses as white fillings to fill your tooth when you have a cavity. So that's the exact same type of material. Your dentist can use composite to put a veneer on your teeth. And what does that mean? They basically usually build up your tooth by that a little bit of a soft, gooey composite, any color that you want, to build up the tooth, the shape of it, and obviously the color that you want. The other option would be porcelain. Now, what's the difference between the two? I'm gonna go on it very quickly, but we have a really long video over the differences between composite and porcelain that you can look at. Composite usually is more affordable or cheaper because the material is cheaper to use. Usually it does stain after a few years and you have to get it polished every year by your dentist or hygienist to maintain, but eventually it's just in the nature of the material that it can get stained. It can easily chip, unfortunately, although if your bite is the way it should be and your dentist does a great job, hopefully it will last a while. And when I say a while, we expect um, on average five years. I have had patients who have had their composite veneers for let's say 10, even 20 years. First of all, they were very stained, but they were not chipped. And that all depends on your bite and how you take care of them and kind of what you eat or what habits you have. Like do you chew on your nails and stuff? The second option, which is porcelain veneer, is more expensive because the material is more expensive. There's usually a ceramist or a lab involved to make the veneers and manufacture them. They do last you much longer, so the average life for them is kind of 10 years. Now again, it can last you five, eight, or I have even seen 20 years. They do not stain as easily, or they usually don't stain at all, unless you have some habits that you shouldn't. For example, you're brushing them with charcoal toothpaste, then that's really bad and they will stain. But naturally, if you just treat them nicely and well, like you should be treating your teeth, they will last you a long time. Uh, they do not stain, you can pick the color, of course, and these are the two main materials that are used to cover your teeth and change the shape and maybe even the color. Very commonly asked questions. Do you shave my teeth for veneers? I have to, from now on, talk mainly about porcelain veneers. Composite, you don't really need any polishing or shaving or cutting down the tooth, but that's considering that your teeth are already where they should be. They're not sticking out, or they're not really sticking in, or they're not crooked. So from now on, let's talk about porcelain veneers. People are usually scared, and they say, oh, but I don't want veneers because I've seen horrific videos online, especially on TikTok, that my teeth are gonna get shaved to beaver size. Guys, those videos are either wrong type of treatment being done for cosmetic reasons, or those people are not getting veneers. See, I'm in Australia, I, I see a lot of people sometimes going overseas and I'm already an um, overseas trained dentist. So this is not a dig on anybody or any university or any country, of course. It's just different type of uh, treatments that is more relevant or more common in different countries. In some countries or some practitioners around the world would, by mistake, cut off a lot of tooth structure to place veneers on. What do I mean by that? Imagine my teeth right now, I had to check, I know they're healthy. Imagine I want to get veneers. Yes, usually the practitioner has to remove a layer back to have room to put veneers on so they don't, you know, stick out. But that amount of polishing or cutting usually should be about half a millimeter. Let's say one millimeter, right? Depending again on the position of the tooth. Let's say a millimeter and a half. That amount of tooth removal, which has to be removed, unfortunately, there is no other option. That's just the damage that you have to accept you're gonna have for the rest of your life on your teeth, is only the front surface of the tooth. You're only changing the front surface of the tooth. Your tooth is already, hopefully, healthy, doesn't need any sort of support around it or at the back of it. So basically, you're not getting crowns done, you're getting veneers done. 
And if your teeth are being shaved and look like shark teeth, what is called on TikTok shark teeth trend, should not happen already. And that's a mistake. And that is being done, first of all, by bad techniques, to be frank. Second, some practitioners think that they're giving the restoration more glue. If you're doing a crown that will hug your tooth all around, compared to a veneer that's only at the front surface of your tooth, you will obviously have more glue inside, right? But that's not the whole point. The fact that the, this patient's gonna have their veneers for extra two years is fantastic, but what's the price to pay to cut off a lot of tooth structure? They're gonna need root canals and lose the tooth and so many other horrific things can happen to the tooth. Keep in mind that if you need veneers, veneers need minimal preparation, if any. And if your teeth are gonna look like sharks or you have seen those videos online, those are either mistakes or that patient already had really bad, broken cavities, all the problems in the tooth. But yes, I also had so many patients that I had to put on all the crowns for. But what was the reason for that? So let's say if this is the tooth, they already had a big cavity here, they had a big filling there, and this part was already falling apart. So what is the point of me putting lots of fillings around and then chuck a veneer on top? A veneer should sit on sound tooth structure that is why I did crowns for them and yes I had to shave more to put crowns there but wouldn't you rather have a healthy tooth structure that's small covered by a strong material like a crown than having lots of fillings and not having your tooth shaved a tooth that's already basically damaged a lot that's what dentists should think about before they decide if you need veneers minimal preparation or crowns a lot of preparation how do veneers work? Usually you would go to your dentist, have a consultation, make sure both of you are on the same page, right? But then you would have an appointment when we would get measurements of your teeth and make sure your teeth are healthy, take x-rays, take photos, talk about what is going to be the end result, how it's gonna look. Keep in mind, not everything is gonna be possible. I've had this problem with a couple of my patients in the past, especially when I was younger, that expectations could not have been managed because they wanted longer teeth when there was no room over there. Veneers are like a cover-up of your own teeth. So if the color bothers you, shape, for example, it's too round, too square, it's broken, these are the reasons usually people cover their teeth up. There are conditions that are genetics, for example, fluorosis. There will be white patches on the teeth that there is nothing you could do to cover them. So the only thing you can do is to put something on the surface that shows to the people, so it looks just, you know, nicer and whiter. Another reason for it would be Hollywood smile. That's basically when people want really dazzling white smile. So if that's what something you're after, that's not something you can do with teeth whitening, or you know you can just naturally have that kind of seat usually you have to get veneers now veneers are type of restorations and teeth restorations usually are not forever nothing can be forever there is wear and tear and you use those teeth every day to eat and chewing forces are really high but there are things you can do to keep them longer. Treat them how you should be treating your own teeth. Floss every day, twice, before you brush your teeth. Brush gently. Do not use any sort of abrasive on top of them. Veneers do not get white by whitening toothpaste or whitening material, charcoal toothpaste. Anything that's basically gritty will ruin the glaze that's on the surface of the tooth or the veneer, and it's gonna ruin the veneer. Other than that, Beside good oral hygiene and not pulling stuff with your teeth, the rest is basically luck and a waiting game. That's another very good question. In my experience, usually when people come to me and ask for veneers, if their teeth are crooked, and I tell them, mm, no, you have to straighten your teeth, they don't like it because they want something very soon. Not waiting a year or two for the orthodontic treatment to work. But you have to keep in mind, I'm gonna show you an example. This patient of mine, Belinda, she had really crooked teeth. These kind of teeth, when they're really sticking in and out, if I want to put veneers on these, 
Do you want the veneers to be crooked? Obviously no. Do you want them to be straight? So I can do two things. I can bring everything to the level of the teeth that are really out, but it would look like Bugs Bunny, or I have to cut the ones that are out so, 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 so much that they will reach the inner ones, but that way those teeth will die. And what's the point of that? So that what I'm trying to tell you is, depends how much crooked net there is. For example, my teeth right now when I'm smiling, I also have a bit of crowding, tiny bit, which I'm planning to fix with Invisalign. If I wanna put many ears on, there will be not much damage to my teeth because you can barely see the crowding, barely. It's like half a millimeter. But if the teeth are really in and out, in and out, and you try to cut them so much to make them look straight, those teeth will die. What's the bad thing about that? You have to have root canal treatment or pull out the tooth. So you went to get a really nice smile, but now you're missing a tooth. No, absolutely not. You of course have to be numb. So having numbing or injections, yes, I mean, it'll sting, you know, every injection will hurt a little bit, whether it's vaccination or it's Botox or it's around your lips. But other than that, you shouldn't be feeling nothing because you're numb. After the first appointment, when we do that a bit of a reduction on the surface of the teeth, which as I explained, should not be a lot. We put temporary veneers on for you and you go home wearing the temporary veneers. So your teeth are not naked. So they might feel a little bit sensitive while you're waiting for your veneers to be ready, which can be a week or two sometimes, but other than sensitivity, no, you shouldn't feel any pain. make sure I get the shape that I want. Now, some of my patients are very particular about what they want. They come in, they bring in a photo, and either it's from Kris Jenner or it's just the mouse, and they know what they want. They say, I want this kind of juice, right? That's fine, and your dentist will talk to you and make sure that your expectations are managed. What do I mean by that? For example, people want sometimes really square teeth, but your teeth are really long. I can't shave them so much to make them a square. So it should be biologically possible or their teeth are really short. And I can make them a little bit longer by veneers, but depends on your bite and the biology of your mouth. So if you want it much longer and there is no room, we cannot do it. There are, on the other hand, there are people who, they don't know what I mean when I say, what shape do you like? And they're like, well, I just want teeth. In that case, we show you and your dentist will show you a couple of examples and they will help you and say, listen, you have a rounder face or a bit of an you know, oval face or a longer face and this kind of teeth will look better on you. Now, there are two ways of making sure that it's gonna suit your face or you like it. You can basically test drive them before you buy them, if you will. What do I mean by that? One would be a digital smile design. So you come to the dentist and we take some photos of you and we Photoshop your future smile on your face. It's not final and 100%, but it gives you an idea of how it can look on your face. Two, it would be actually wearing temporary veneers. That usually happens after the preparation. It can also be done before the preparation, before you have done anything, but it is a part of the procedure. After the first appointment, when you have had the bit of reduction on your teeth, we put temporary veneers on your teeth and you go home with them. That will help you sit down without numbing and look in the mirror and show to your friends and family and see if you're happy with that shape on your face. Does it suit you? Are you comfortable? Or it feels weird, it feels too long, it feels too bucky, whatever. And then you can give the feedback to your dentist so they can adjust the final result. I also hear it a lot from people. I don't want veneers because, oh my God, they look like piano keys. They don't have to. I have done teeth that look very Hollywood and white in a way that they might even look a little bit fake, but that patient really wanted it that way. And she's very happy still, okay? On the other hand, I have had patients who wanted their veneers to look so natural that nobody can tell. That is your choice. You can convey this message to your dentist. One thing you have to have in mind, if you wanna have two veneers or four veneers or one veneer because one tooth's broken, we have to make it natural. We have to make it match all the other teeth. We do it in a way that you cannot even tell that that tooth's a veneer and the other one's not. We have to do it in a way that if a dentist looks at you while you're talking, they cannot tell which one is which. If they look in, they can. But if you want them to look much whiter than your own teeth or really Hollywood or 
just a different shape, then you cannot only have one or two. You have to do the whole teeth that's showing your smile. It might be just the eight or the 10 that show here and another eight and 10 that show on the lower. Yes, you can always only do the top teeth because they show more when you smile, but when you talk, you can see a very difference in color between upper and lower teeth then. Now, I'm gonna just name few, but there is a whole list. One would be that your tooth is gonna get reduced a little bit. We are gonna remove a bit of enamel, not all of it as much as we can, because having enamel left is good for you and it's good even for our glue to cement in and stay better. But that of the tooth that you have lost is never gonna grow back. So it's not like in 10 years time, you can say, you know why, just take them off, I don't want them anymore. They're not like fake nails. They cannot be just removed because the tooth underneath is the reduced part of the tooth. It will be sensitive. The second risk is that you might feel a little bit of sensitivity sensitivity at the beginning usually if the job is done properly and you take good care of them the sensitivity will die off the other problem is sometimes people not because of veneers but aging usually or brushing too hard they sometimes get gum recession if I put a veneer on up to the gum line and it's really white and then my gum goes up in 10 years time you can see the difference in color so this kind of thing can happen with veneers but as long as the job's done perfectly and you take really good care of them it should minimize the number of times you have to change your veneers. Yes, they can, but depends how much gap there is, right? Let's say the two front teeth of mine are two millimeters apart. Then if I add one millimeter to each tooth, they come together, they'll be tiny bit wider, but it doesn't mean they look too bad. But let's say my front teeth are really far apart. In that case, I cannot just close the gap using veneers because the two will look really fat. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. First of all, you still need a consultation with a dentist that you can trust, but also, it's not one size fits all. You have to check with the dentist to see, can you even get veneers or no? Because the gap's so much, you have to first close the gaps and bring them together as much as possible. And afterward, you might say, you know what, I don't even need veneers, they came together. Or, okay, no, I still don't like the shape of them. Let's do veneers, but at least that way, they're gonna look much better. is covered by dental insurance. It's very hard for me to respond because depending on the country you're in and the type of insurance you have, you might or might not be covered for certain things. Now, in Australia, I know more than 10 dental insurances and usually with most covers, they will not pay for cosmetic treatments. But that again really depends on your insurance and the cover you have with them. So obviously if you get a higher cover and pay them tons of money, then probably they cover more. That's a decision you can make. But if you're thinking, shall I go get insurance because I want veneers? I've never seen an insurance that pays full for you know a full set of 20 veneers. What you can do is you can do interest-free payment plans usually at every dentistry these days to make it easier for you to be able to get the treatment you want. There's another option in Australia that only some people are eligible for, but we can help you figure out if you can ask for your super to be able to pay for the dental treatment that you need. Now, that's a very, very personal question. I would say just do your research, check some of their works on their Instagram, website, go in and have a chat with them and see if you can basically relate and talk with each other and feel easy because I understand this is a semi-permanent treatment and you wanna have this smile for the next 10, 20 years. So you have to make sure that you can relate with that dentist and they understand what you want. Thanks for watching. I hope that I could answer all of your questions. If you have more questions, comment below, but also go to our playlist, check a couple of other videos about veneers because we have covered almost everything we see day to day. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.